Namaste. So now let's continue with the Lakshmi Tantra and summarize chapter one. This version that we have of Lakshmi Tantra was spoken by the sage Atri. Who is Atri? He is one of the seven sages, the so-called Big Dipper or Great Bear constellation has seven main stars, and he is the last one at the tip of the handle. And the other great sages all were born as mental sons of Lord Brahma. So these are ever liberated souls. They're never in material consciousness. They're never conditioned. They're never in ignorance. Huh? So all their knowledge is golden. <laughs> it's completely perfect. So this version of Lakshmi Tantra was spoken by Atri to his wife, Anasuya. Now, Anasuya was such a great devotee that the three main gods, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, took birth as her sons just so they could experience her love. This is what a great devotee, what a great mother she was. So, now that we know who is speaking, huh, let's take a look at the opening of chapter one. Anasuya to Atri. Now I am eager to hear about Lakshmi's power, the nature of this goddess, her form and origin. What human faculty enables one to recognize her? What is her substratum? By what means is realization of her achieved? And what results from knowing her? All this I desire to learn from thee, who art the most enlightened of all scholars of the Vedas. Since its lore is secret, and I have not as yet inquired about it, thou hast not disclosed it to me. Through contact with this knowledge, I shall have accomplished all the aims of my life. So now, this is spoken by a woman who has raised Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva as her children. So if this knowledge enables her to reach all the aims of her life, just imagine how powerful it is. Just imagine how wonderfully potent it is and deep, deep. So these questions that she asks Atri are very significant because these are the topics that he is going to address in his reply. So if by learning about these things enables a woman like her to attain the aims of her life, imagine what it will do for us. So now let's listen to what Atri replies. Having heard her words, the worthy Atri said, O thou who art familiar with religion and duly practice religious rites, it is good that thou hast today reminded me of that which I did not previously reveal, since I intended to do so only when requested. O virtuous one, Thou art worthy to hear about the supreme power of Lakshmi, which stands on the pinnacle of the Shrutis and which endures forever. Formerly, the sages of the Malaya range, devout in performing religious rites, had been instructed in the sacred lore of Satvata by Narada of godly countenance. They put the same question to the noble and immortal Narada who resembles Brahman and is steeped in knowledge of the Bhagavata Dharma, Pancharatra Vidhi. So now this reply is also very significant. He is giving her this instruction, which is generally kept secret because she specifically requested it. Otherwise, he wasn't going to say anything about it. See, that's how secret it is that even a woman like Anasuya has to ask specifically 
to receive it. So this is also the pinnacle of the Shruti. What does that mean? Well, the Shruti is the knowledge that should be heard from the guru that gives one the uh, opening or the portal, the path to self-realization. So this knowledge represents an opening, a portal, a way. It's hard to describe because it's very subtle. It's a change in consciousness, a change in a point of view that leads to self-realization. And there's more. The sages of the Malaya, which is a range of mountains in South India, where sandalwood grows and other nice things, had been given religious instruction by Narada because they were expert in performing religious rites. And Atri also mentions that about his wife, that she was expert in performing sadhana and religious rituals. This is a prerequisite to receiving this knowledge. So as we talked about last time, or was it the first <laughs> video, one should be of good character and experienced in performing Vedic religious rites to hear this scripture. Otherwise, it will go in one ear and out the other. You won't know what to do with it, you know? I'm reminded of a joke that there was a really nerdy guy, you know, some kind of computer programmer or something like this. And he fell in love with this beautiful dancer, this really hot girl. <laughs> and she kept avoiding him and avoiding him. And finally he confronted her. Well, why are you avoiding me? I, don't you know I love you, you know? And she says, you know, a guy like you, if you even got me, you wouldn't know what to do with me. And it's the same thing with this knowledge. If you're not qualified, you won't know what to do with it. It'll seem theoretical. It'll seem academic. It won't have any, any real impact on you. But if someone is prepared, if someone has the background, oh, this is the stuff, man. <laughs> so let's go on. The sages said, Noble sir, from thee have we heard the Bhagavata Dharma, known as Sattvata, which comprises the elements of Sattva, goodness and purity, and has but one aim, liberation. We are eager to hear about the divine attributes of Padmini, Lakshmi, which afford protection against the miseries of life. Please enlighten us. Narada, it gives me satisfaction that you sages who have observed vows come with your request to me today. I am pleased and shall this very day relate to you the Tantra of the immortal Lakshmi, in which she, the goddess Padmini, the divine consort of Padmanabha, manifests herself on a lotus and appears with all her essential attributes and powers. So it's very significant that Atri is not trying to explain this himself, but he's referencing an earlier conversation where Narada, who he considered his guru, uh, above him, more powerful, more enlightened than himself, explained the same thing to the sages. And this is called parampara. Parampara means the disciplic lineage that we do not pretend. Uh, we don't take the position that we know everything or even anything. <laughs> but we quote from the previous authorities. Now, modern people don't like this. They don't understand it. They think maybe it's a sign of weakness or something that, oh, he has to quote somebody else, right? But no, this is the Vedic way. And you'll see this again and again, especially in the Puranas. 
that when someone is asked a question, they refer to an earlier discussion on the same topic. Because after all, there are only so many questions, right? And these things have been discussed since literally the beginning of time. So Narada is going to speak and his words will be repeated by Atri. And that's the work that we're about to hear. Formerly, owing to Durvasa's curse, Indra was deprived of the daily study of the Vedas and the observance of sacrifices. Consequently, the three worlds lost sight of Lakshmi. The gods languished and religion became almost extinct, split up in sects and nearly died. Then Brahma, along with the demigods, approached the Kshirodaka ocean and after doing terrible penance for many divine years, awakened Janardana, the Lord of all and the God of gods from his cosmic sleep. And Brahma informed him of the plight of the gods. Next, according to a plan devised by Vishnu, the gods started churning up the Kshirodaka. One by one then arose out of the ocean Parijata, Uchayashravas, the best horse, Airavata, the king of elephants, the host of celestial nymphs, the poison Kalakuta, Varuni, and Amrita, the nectar of immortality. After which, the goddess Lakshmi emerged from the ocean, accompanied by the moon, and Padmini immediately nestled on Padmanabha's breast. As soon as she cast her eyes on the gods, they recovered their lost splendor. But since she did not cast her eyes on the Daityas, they were defeated. Now, Indra is always getting himself in trouble. And in this case, he was cursed by Durvasa. Now, who is Durvasa? <laughs> One of the sons of Anasuya. <laughs> So one of the sons of Anasuya, now who is our other son? Datatreya. Remember Datatreya? He is the incarnation of Vishnu, who spoke the Sri Vidya to Parashuram. We covered that back in the Tripura Sundari. Huh? So all these stories are connected. They're intimate and connected stories because they happened in the early days of the universe when there weren't so many people. Because the three worlds lost sight of Lakshmi, religion became almost dead, split up into sects, just like we see today. And this is the Kali Yuga, so it's expected that people will lose sight of the real religion. But it's still very unfortunate, even though it's expected. So by hearing the Lakshmi Tantra, one can remedy all of the problems of Kali Yuga and personally experience enlightenment. This is the great value of this scripture. Advised by Brihaspati to satisfy the goddess, Indra performed severe penance on the bank of the Kshirodaka ocean for 2,000 celestial years, standing motionless as a piece of wood on only one foot, observing silence and subsisting on air alone, with hands, gaze, and face turned upwards to the sky. At the end of the penance, that goddess who manifests herself on a lotus and is Vishnu's queen appeared before him, smiling. Indra said, If thou grantest me a boon, O great goddess, then reveal to me the nature of truth which thou, O ruler of the gods, representest. By what means canst thou be fathomed? What is thy substratum? How art thou to be attained, O eternal one? To whom dost thou belong, and what is the nature of thy relationship to him? Delighting in him as a milk cow delights in her calf, Padma, filled with affection, answered Pakashasana, 
O Chakra, noble slayer of Vritra, hear who I am, what my nature is, to whom I belong, and my relationship to him. So here we have a conversation between Indra and Lakshmi being recited by Narada to the Malaya sages. And that conversation is repeated by Atri to Anasuya. <laughs> this is very common, especially in the Puranas, not so much in the Tantras, but this Tantra has a lot of a Puranic style to it. It makes a good story, which is one of the reasons I chose to present it. The other one is that I was given the instructions. <laughs> so we're going to continue next time with the beginning of Lakshmi's instruction to Indra on self-realization. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum.